first item is public comments. Uh, a time when we can receive the agenda. comments on any, any matter related to our work uh, from anybody. Uh, if you'd like to, would you like to make a, a comment or? I'm not sure if I'm on the agenda or not. Uh, Al Williams from Northampton Community TV, or if I'm in for a public comment. I think, no, I'm um, okay, oh, on Beaverbrook, you said? Uh, Northampton Community Television. Oh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. No, you're on the agenda, okay. so we'll, we'll take you then. Yep. Um, okay, the, um, there being no uh, public comments, uh, we'll move ahead to approval of minutes. Uh, Sarah distributed electronically minutes from uh, Monday, July 25th, and uh, August 29th, um, and so we are be uh, um, discussing. I should we'll be uh, approving both. Why don't we do them as a group? Is there any, any question or any uh, um, comment anybody wants to make on either sets of minutes? Well, just a couple. Okay. I can't remember if I have one or two corrections just to keep everything. Great. Which, which Absolutely correct. Date? On the first set of minutes, the July 25th, it's like halfway into the end of the three days. It's on page two where it mentions Hosea Baskin from Franklin Street. It's H O S I A H. Hosea. H O S E A. I have to write it down. S O H, but he spells it. He spells it H O S E A. E A H, yeah. H O S E A H. Hosea Baskin. And I think, I think that was the only thing I saw, just to, as I said, have them correct. I wasn't at the meeting, but I know how to spell it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other comments or suggestions or corrections? Okay, there being none, I'll ask for uh, approval of both um, sets of minutes. So with one vote, is uh, there a motion to approve? So Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, all those opposed? And, uh, minutes are um, accepted. The third item on the agenda is <coughs> Northampton Community Television Historic Tour Project. Yes. Uh, identify yourself and then speak to that issue. Sure. My name is Al Williams and I'm the Executive Director of Northampton Community Television. And. Um, Essentially, uh, uh, what we sort of we've been envisioning a project that we would like to sort of partner with the Historic District Commission uh, with, and that project is a historic tour of Northampton based on QR code technology. I'm not sure if you're familiar with QR code technology or how familiar you are. So it looks like some nods, at least um, at least some are familiar with it. So the idea would be that we would start as small as we wished and expand it as large as we wished. Um, essentially putting QR codes up around the city and allowing people who visited those different sites to scan them with smartphones and end up in web pages or the videos that we've produced. The one area in which we are not experts at NCTV is in uh, the history. What, which spots would be uh, worth picking? What kind of content um, should, should be involved in, in short videos about those spaces? And so um, essentially, I'm here just just to sort of make contact with the Historic Commission and see if there's any interest in, and if you could provide guidance for us and where we could sort of, you know, we, we would like some of that kind of, if we could have that content generated, we could take the production and technology side of it and start making it happen. There also might be um, some grant opportunities. Very good. Sounds creative and, and uh, uh, original. Thank you very much. Are there oh. comments? Did you want me to go? Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, um, I really like this idea, and uh, I'm familiar with QR code technology being a realtor, and this is something that's the cutting edge, really. <clears throat> um, I think we're at a kind of a watershed moment that, that your organization wants to do this, because there's, there is a, a group called Walking Talking Tours now coming to town to start to do walking tours of the history of Northampton. Huh? And I'll be one of the docents talking about the you know, railroad network here and what was there. And, and um, it's, 
it's fortuitous that the city has just completed a um, a re-inventorying of all the historic structures through the Form B process in, in the city. And, and that data is going to be on the city's website, so it's going to be easy for you to find historic text and narratives about various properties. But I think it's important, it's a, it's a forgotten thing that's used by probably within 18 months, maybe over a quarter of a million people a year collectively. The Dead Railroad Corridor Network has transformed into a pedestrian bike path that most people have no clue of what was there. Yet there's, there's at least 20 or 30 places that have bits and pieces of archaeology that might be worthwhile calling <coughs> out through the technology and, and information you're developing here. And so that, I, I applaud you. Thank you. Yeah, I think the, uh, the form Bs um, are the source of information for you. We give you a paragraph on the historical significance of a property and then a paragraph that, that describes the architectural characteristics. So that would probably be as much content as you would need right off the bat. And those, um, uh, as Craig mentioned, are available uh, online and more and more are being added. And it's the form B's of the um, uh, Massachusetts Historical Commission. Um, as uh, people record information in various communities, this is how it's a, a standard way of logging that information in. So I would say that would be one of the first places you would want to go. Um, and then I think that, that would also give you the geographical location. By street address, you can begin to see what a pattern might be, or if you want to focus in a particular area, or you know, just do the whole city at once, that would be the way to play the game. Are those state websites the Form B, or is that the city website where those are available? The, the older forms are available, some of them through the, the MACRIS system, um, which is a state website. Okay. And the newer forms are currently being uploaded right now to the city's website. Yeah, I would re rely on the newer forms yeah. rather than the older forms. <coughs> They're much more tech-friendly, too, and I think will be tied into the city's GIS system, so you're going to be able to find exactly where they are mm -hmm. through a Google-based map system. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. The, the thing, the, yeah, I think this is a great idea, because it is a good place for information, these historic inventory forms. However, I, I don't know how you're planning to do this. You're saying you want to put up some sort of plaque. Most of those historic inventory forms are private houses. And so the question is, where would you put that, and how many of those would you want to do? But for instance, if you went to Historic Northampton, I, I don't know if they currently still have even a, a paper form that's a guide, a walking tour of Northampton, which would have certain um, important sites, or again, something to give it a theme or a, per, um, you know, a theme or organize it. And also in Florence. Um, Steve Strymer of Collective Copies has done an African American history historical walking tour, which he has in a paper form, and that might be one to start with because it's already the form is there. Talk to Steve, and again, I mean, obviously you'd have to get some sort of permission. Where where do you put these plaques? And I'm sure you probably even have to talk to the city to have a permit to put up a plaque somewhere. But again, it seems to me that they would make more sense if they sort of led somebody in in order. And the other thing that would that, that I would think about is, um, I think that the QR code technology is great, but not everybody has a smartphone and not everybody has that program or app or whatever. So I would hope that they would have even just a little tagline on them saying, you know, if you don't know what this is, yeah. go here, or and just have a few sentences that actually told something about it. And then for more information, you know, somebody can scan the QR code but just to, you know, sort of bridge this gap because not everybody knows what those are or has access, and that way you're still providing something, and people aren't going to start complaining about these odd little things everywhere and what the hell are they? And and I've been to historic sites where um, they actually have a um, not just a website, but there was something you could do by phone that it gave a telephone number. I don't know whether you want to get into both of these, but. It, 
there was something recorded that you could also access. But um, I think the QR code doing going to some kind of website, but again, where you want those, you know, would I mean I don't know where you put those, you know, whether they be a link to somebody's website, either Forbes's website or Stuart Northampton's, so that there's a site where those stories and pictures are. Yeah, I think reaching out to yeah. a few of the local organizations, yeah. Forbes, Historic Northampton, uh, Stern Truth Committee, right. uh, Steve Schremer in general, uh, the Walking Talking Tours, and sort of working with them. North Historic Northampton has some great kiosks throughout the city, right. which would be a natural place right. for something like that because it also provides some immediate written content. Right. Like to say. You can make them with historic photographs, too, right. so that you have not only the existing building itself, right. but you might have a photograph of the way it was or the right. context. At and Ford, the we're working on digitizing a lot of our old house pictures and getting them online, so that might be you know, something that could John, could a, could a video, a walking tour video, or uh, that, that such as we're hearing about, mm -hmm. include a, an automatic segue into a Forbes photograph? I would think so. I mean, it fits very nicely with some things we're working on at Forbes. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get some, something in the Coolidge Presidential Museum on an iPad or something like that, which would have some similar type of content. So I don't, I don't see why it couldn't be done. Quick. This, um, this, this is probably morphing into more than you ever envisioned. <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to run away now. But, but I think this may be, you know, what you came out here with an idea, yeah. and we're sort of like sounding off on what we think would be a route to go. It might be, it might be applicable to, to have a CPA grant to develop the inventory of what you want to cover and the route and how you want to sort of, I like the idea of a QR code and I do think what Barbara said it's very important to be able to develop a process for getting it out on the street People can opt in, uh, and so we're gonna have to, you'd have to go through the, the city's permitting for that, and, and buy in from the landowner, and and have the people shine a QR reader at that little transponder up there, and, and, and so it's gonna be it's probably bigger than you ever thought. Well, you, you know we're well aware that it could be enormous. And I think we're just sort of, we're in discovery right now. And, and it's sort of just, I think. Uh, I would just say, from, I, I think that the source is, if you, just, if you see this as a work in progress, yeah. or something that is a pilot, and then you can add on to it, the easiest, fastest way to get some great pre um, done content is through, as Bruce said, Historic Northampton and Steve Strymer up in Florence at Collective Copies. Because they can just hand you stuff that is that's been pre-done, and as far as uh, uh, other visual resources, Forbes Library, a uh, phenomenal collection. So um, that would get you going. It's already done, okay. essentially. It's just a matter for it and putting it into your format. Um, but it sounds like a great project, I, I, Bruce. Yeah, I just had a question. Um, when you set up this system. I'm confused. Will there be a physical marker or device placed on these properties? Or is this just something electronically when you approach them, the signal will come at you? No, it would be, it would be a mark. Okay, then you're going to have to enlist the property owners yeah. and probably 90% of the people in town will say, no, I don't want to have this. So you're going to have to do a real public relations campaign to be able to get people involved with because there, there's a, a marked uh, hesitancy for any sort of singling out or IDing some of these things. And I'm sad, sad to say, relative to historic and historic preservation, that's extremely true, not just in Northampton, but throughout the country. So that's something just to be aware of as you work through this process. Do you, do you know of any place around that has done this before? Is it, has anybody ever heard of this? I mean, you might want to check with the National Trust for Historic Preservation. 
which is the national organization dealing with these issues. And if you contact um, their, well, their New England regional office in Boston uh, or their national headquarters in D.C., it, that's their job, that's their profession to know what's happening in the country. And they would probably be pretty excited about something like this. Any GPS enabled phone should be able to. They just pull up. Oh, yeah, sorry. I think you can do that. Can, doesn't need to have a marker. It's right? possible. Oh, I see. I, I think there's any advertisements now where people are just pointing their phone down the street and see yeah. little reviews for restaurants that are just down the street because yeah. they can tell where it is and so on. I don't know, you know, that that part of that technology I don't personally know as well, the development of that, but that's something we could do discovery on, um, you know. I, I think there's probably more than one way of implementing it as well. I mean, you, you know, you could hand someone, uh, if you had to use visual cues, there's more than one way you could do it. You don't have to put them on buildings, you could put them on a map, or you could. Yeah, I would say that something that didn't require people to um, nail a barcode to their house yeah, would, would definitely yeah. be good for you. Uh, yeah, because in a story, I think people would <laughs> yeah, check. Yeah, no yeah. offense, I mean these are not right. most. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people like abstract art, but it's like it would be, <laughs> it would okay. detract to me yeah. to have these little things everywhere or a lot of places. But again, somewhere like the kiosks might be a natural start. Yeah, you could add something there. Yeah, that's they true. may be open to that. We can right. speak to right. that. Right, right. You could add something. Maybe there. on a block by block basis. We use them within the library quite a bit. Yeah. Okay. In the last six months, we've started using them. It's a big, growing QR area. codes? Yeah, inside libraries and museums. Inside the library. So I would, yeah. I would look at, look at I have to, to second um, Craig's comment about the CPA. Look up the CPA's uh, charter and it's the scope of what it fund. Uh, and see, you might see that, that this is something that would match up with your efforts to put this together. You're, a nonprofit organization that's for the benefit of historic preservation and, and appreciation in Northampton. And uh, we our, our support for the project can certainly cannot guarantee the success of the application, but um, but you never know. So it, it uh, we'd be happy to review anything that you write in process and just to help you along. Okay. But it sounds like a, a really good project. Okay. Okay. Everybody support it? Any, any other comments? Sounds great. Keep us posted. I, I will keep you posted, yeah. and I appreciate the feedback. I've got a couple directions to look into now, and uh, you know, it's a, it's obviously a long term, not going to happen next week, kind of thing. But, <laughs> but we will keep you uh, up to date. Sort if of you'd like to contact any members individually, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the scope of what we can talk about tonight is by way of sort of a committee, but there's certainly right. historical or historiographical knowledge represented within this body beyond the scope of today's meeting uh, just by way of talking about history. So um, please feel free to contact any of us uh, for additional help. Terrific. Yeah, one other thing, you might want to work through neighborhood organizations such as we have the representative here from, is it North Street? Yeah. Okay, the very strong neighborhood association yeah. uh, that would be very interested in a project that would uh, you know, add to the interest in their neighborhood. And there are other neighborhood Neighborhood yeah, the Pomeroy Terrace uh, group uh, neighborhood yeah. is very, very uh, coming, very cohesive, and they would love to see uh, some uh, uh, notice given visually. I think to what makes their neighborhood special. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a great project. Great yeah. Man. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We expect to see you back here frequently. I will. I will. <laughs> I will see you at some point soon. Okay. <laughs> thank you for coming and thank yep. you for volunteering this this work. Absolutely. Okay. Um, any final comments on that topic? Great. Um, as long as I don't see those codes everywhere, I'm probably okay. <laughs> they have some examples online, and some of them are discrete and uh, pass out maps, and some of them are on building. Yeah, they're, they're not particularly attractive. Yeah, because on, on a map, I mean, it makes sense if you're doing a tour and then you have them there, but, like, you know, I mean, I, personally, I, I would not want one anywhere near my house <laughs> at the moment. Um, it has to be so next, you can see. Next item on the agenda is the Beaverbrook Arch Bridge CPA application. Sarah, can you talk to us about that? I can. Um, here is the CPA application for everybody. 
So the planning department is applying for Community Preservation Act funds under both historic preservation and recreation to fix this historic arch bridge. And there's a map at the back of the packet. Um, this is part of the Norwana Rail Trail Network, almost uh, up to Williamsburg. And the arch bridge in question looks an awful lot like the arch bridge on our street in Leeds by Luke Park. Um, and when the planning department took ownership of this, I think two or three years ago, we had an engineering study done that basically said the bridge needed some remedial repairs. It's not in, in too awful shape, and it's not going to fall down tomorrow, but without some repointing and, and some good historic repairs, it, it might not be available for future use. So since this is part of a historic preservation project, we're coming to you as required for support for the CPA. So that's that's the quick version. Basically, we just got an engineering study. Everybody, and it's know where it is. I don't know where this is. If you go up to uh, Leeds, and go over the pass over the top of the hill past the school, and then uh, you. Before coming to the river, um, the bike path heads up to the right, right, and very soon after it does so, it stops being paved. Okay. It's, it's a hard pack surface, and it's a lovely, lovely area that gets a lot of uh, uh, neighborhood as well as uh, uh, community uh, walking and biking up there. And it's uh, well worth a visit. Yeah. Um, but along the way, there is a uh, because it was an old rail. That's the old rail path. Right. There was a rail bridge over. Uh, the rails are now gone, long gone. Um, uh, but there, there were some monumental stoneworks to uh, protect the rail pathway from the uh, uh, Mill River there because they're in close proximity. And you can see from the. Uh, uh, your massiveness of that of that arch on the last page. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, uh, the size of that. Oh yeah, of that's that, massive. Of that thing. Um, and it needed to support a steam engine. So um, in, in the in, in, since it was last used, all kinds of trees and yeah. things yeah. happened, and the pointing is is. Uh, Need to be redone re and so on. I am going up to view it um, very soon. I don't have my calendar with me, but I will be part of a, a CPA tour. Um, but you know, I, I know where it is and what what it's about, and it's uh, certainly um, the continuation of the. Um, I mean, this is not our concern, but the continuation of the rail path is certainly contingent on the distance of that bridge. More importantly, uh, the bridge stands as a uh, historic remnant of the era of industrialization in the, the uh, um, Mill River Valley and it, uh, when trains went up as far as, uh, I believe at least as far as uh, Williamsburg, uh, carrying freight and further uh, as trolley and uh, needing this kind of, this kind of structure. Well, you have my vote. So the, if anybody wants to take a trip out there, um, so this is Grove Avenue, and then the bike way, the bike way is listed on there now. Too. This is an updated Google map. Yeah, so the bike way goes up to here, and then um, from here up, it, it's not paved. It's um, it's a cinder surface, but it, it's still a nice trail, mm -hmm. and lots of yeah. people use it. Okay. And so this is right by the Mill River, over at Muirbrook, right here. Now, sir, there's some new housing developments up in here, aren't there? Um, mm -hmm. I believe there's a, yes. there's a bikeway connector yes. that was built. Yes, the yeah. developer allowed the, the path to divert from the dead railroad up into his development in order to uh, make it more attractive to sale, to sell the properties but also made it possible for the path to get built out that far into, into the woods there. I should have mentioned that a friend of mine has done an inventory of all the arch bridges still standing in the northeast, and there's probably something under 20 still standing. 
And so it's very notable to have two in one community. Does Chester have quite a number of them? Ch Chester, those are, uh, those are, there were four uh, bridges. This one's a little bit different in that they use mortar. Okay. The ones that were done by Whistler's father, mm -hmm. when the railroad went west of Westfield into the Berkshires, the, uh, there was four bridges, and they they uh, they're still there. Two yeah. of which are still in train service. They see about 30 trains a day, mm -hmm. uh, and they, they're just as Whistler's father built them back in the 1840s. Two of them, when they realigned the railroad after World War One. Uh, since they had better explosives, they could cut their way through the mountains better. And they took two of the bridges that are out of service, but they've now been resurrected in the last few years as a rail trail, a walking trail, so you can see those. But those are a little bit different. Those okay. are much bigger than these. These are smaller. Well, this is a lovely uh, artifact. Yeah. But you need to put a north arrow on your map. It was basically so dark. He must have been like my trip over the last year, but this is the rail trail going along up here. Yep. And there is now a housing development. Single family homes, I think. Yes. It would have been the foundation when I was there last, but yeah. um, there's, there's access from Route 9 up in here, but in the, and there's a rail trail that does a, um, a, um, Pick clip turn into into uh, into the, the housing development. Not very nicely. And anyway, it's a uh, it's a historic bridge, apparently unusual at, uh, in this state. Um, it is uh, still pretty intact. Uh, they have come. The city has come to, uh, before the CPA for money to help. Uh, uh, preserve it, um, and the CPA would like to have our opinion on it. And any um, any further questions or comments? It's a great project. Um, so I'd like to ask for a motion to uh, um, approve a recommendation to the, a, a positive recommendation to the CPA. I'll make that motion. And second. Okay. Well, so, is there, is there any further discussion? So we would have, it would be a letter of support that would be added yes, to Yes, and, and I'll write a letter of support indicating the committee would then really support this. Um, and, um, okay, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, ayes have it. Thank you. The next item is preservation award discussions. And uh, Robert, can I turn it over to you? Sure. Um, I don't know if we, or Sarah or somebody can tell me that we have a location or a date yet. Well, we do not. Uh, that's one of the things to, mm -hmm. to speak with you about. Um, okay. The senior center is available, but we'll have to pay about $75 for it. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know if people would want to do that or if we should investigate having it someplace else. Because we talked about going back to, since it wouldn't be a warm day, presumably, I mean, it wouldn't be a hot summer day, we could try for Florence. Uh, Is that free? Center. I believe that's free. I mean, both centers are free. Um, no, I think it's like oh, $55. I think yeah. that is. $55 to $70. Dollars. It's possible because, well, I don't remember us paying last well, time, but. $75. Yeah, we, we certainly have it. Yeah, we yeah. certainly yeah. have it. And we, or we could okay. do the Civic Center and pay, I mean, the Teacher Center and pay for it, too. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, so we could certainly pay for the site. Are there, you may have experience with banks that have community rooms that do this sort of thing sometimes for free. I don't know about no? banks. Okay. All right. yeah, but I don't think it's unreasonable okay. for us um, to pay. But if, um, Sarah, could you probably nail that community, Florence Community Center then? Sure. Okay. Um, do we have a preferred date? We had before either <coughs> October 26th, November 2nd, or November 16th. Or is there one of those that works better for people? Well, I think November 16th is getting a little late in that month. But you said you couldn't do November 9th. Right. right. Um, so was October 26th, what, what day of the week is that for like? Uh, they're all Wednesday.
pretty much open for anything. Do you think that date's free for you? No, the either the twenty sixth or the second, just so we don't get too late into November. Oh yeah, look. Like, no, when Wednesday, I work Wednesday evening. Well, well, this is. Oh, so you work from when you started working? Two. Yeah. But it's okay. Because <laughs> usually, you know, I mean, November. I won't be hard. It'll be fine, also. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to stay away from that day. Any days that we can, you just can't. Do it. Beyond that, why don't I, Barbara? Can I ask you to sure. to work yep. uh, one on one with Sarah, Sarah and just Sarah choose and a date uh, yep. that, that, as long as it isn't all, you know blacked out, right. and uh, and, and yep. we'll go with that, and that way we'll have the date right. uh, to tell our uh, recipients. Right. And you need to so start to move on that. Two weeks ahead of time. Well, as as soon as I can get it, really, because then I have well, not later than not two later than two weeks before the date. Because I've heard from Smith, and I have some pictures from them, um, and, uh, and I got one picture from, mm -hmm. what, what is his name, from 104 North Street? Who's the, 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 the developer? Oh, it was John Landry, I think. John Landry. Yeah. John, on Elm Street. <laughs> yeah, he just, he sent me one picture of the front of it. That's one, well, I mean, that's certainly significant. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is he so finished I, enough? Is he finished now? And I can go out time? and... And I talked to Tris and Andy Finish about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tom Tom nice photograph. And did you ask them to send me some photographs? Yes, yes. they have the a photo one photograph, but they say it's perfect. Okay. Um, right. if you the, just, old, the way it was, I can reproduce. Sort right, of we can. It's now. Right, right, we can obviously, I can go around and, and then the it's the work. It seems to Yeah, description work. But just to remind people that I need them, so because this is. I told them I needed them for tonight. Okay. <laughs> All right. So hopefully, so if I don't find the people I may find the people who said yes, I'll do that presentation. Yeah. And um, and it, if you can't be here, if be at, at Wednesday, then if you're still willing to sort of write up a little something or give a summary, then we can read it for you. We can do that. So um, so I think we're in fairly good shape for that. As you said, just picking that date. And the, so the question is, let's see. This is the end of September. We're doing it October 26th. We probably wouldn't be meeting again before then. Is that right? No, we wouldn't. Right. So um, once we decide where it's going to be, um, or or I could just say, you know, who would like to bring some drinks, or you know, and we can get ready. Give you up a task for everybody. Yes, yeah, so give a task now. I mean, I'm I'm perfectly happy to do the calligraphy and the certificates do the program because I just have that set up on my computer. Yeah, you have the Um, right not now. yet. You said you were looking that's for That's a, it? that's another topic. Oh, okay. About and then, and I'm perfectly happy to do the PowerPoint. But in terms of, like, food and stuff, I'd rather just have other just, people doing just that. Just assign it. Yeah. Cool. So, would you like to bring some drinks? Sure. Do it? Okay, do that. do that. And we don't just need gym. cups. And, right, that would be good. Perfect. <laughs> you know exactly what we need. <laughs> and then, um, you know, we just you know we don't need much. Just you know, maybe a little cheese and crackers and some cookies or something. Okay. Um, I can do that if, if that works. That's probably the easiest for me to get reimbursed. So that's fine. You should che cheese and crackers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, you know, I, who knows? We never know how many people are going to. And what time do you think? Just we've little, been? I think we we've, we've been doing these early. Uh, we've been doing this. Our time has traditionally been between 4.30 and 6. Good. So I don't see why we shouldn't stick with that. And, uh, you know, I can always send emails from my people. And, and well, I'm trying to think if we do it at the Florida Civic Center, because that, that's where we're trying for now. Yes? Yeah, I'll, get, I'll check they, those. They have, if they're PowerPoint, not they have a PowerPoint projector there, and I can just mm. borrow a laptop from Smith. Yeah, I'll make sure I'll, that's all set up. I can always bring mine, too. It's easy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we just have to remember to, I think there's something we have to get a key from, or I have to remember how that thing works. There's like a box you have to do something with. I, but I can, I can even talk to the guy uh, at 
the barbershop and uh, refresh my memory how that works. Well, um, okay. so, it, uh, aside in, in the meantime, really, if you need anything brought of any kind, just, okay. just, just well, aside. Well, Bruce said he do drinks and I'll do drinks. If, you're, if you really want to do the cheese and crackers, sure. Okay, no problem. I'll bring some cookies. You want to bring some cookies? That would be nice. Yeah, I'll bring some cookies. How about okay. um, PR on the Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. We have to do that, too. Maybe that's what I'd rather have somebody else do also. The what? Would you like to do a press release? Uh, a press release? Because we yeah. should um, obviously advertise this. <laughs> I'm not good at press release. Are you, are you uh... Oh, okay. well, I'll do it nonetheless. Do we have a contact? Do we know of a I, we have a media list. I can send it out there. Could you email that to me? Yeah. And I'll uh, I'll get a press release after that person. And uh, you know, if you want, I could send you a few of the. I mean, I'll make sure you have all the the projects. Oh, okay. I can okay, send them to you anew. So I'll send the projects to you, and um, I'll try to get that out. Yeah. And, the and then presumably, once we have this date, we. There is an official, there an official letter that goes to each. Yeah, I'll nail this down. I'll nail it down tomorrow. Just, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. not sure how much we'd be willing to pay or not. But I'll send the projects to David for the press release. Because that would be great for it. Something I wouldn't have to do. So, I think that might take care of it. All right. And the last thing is the award. Yeah. I oh, couldn't yeah. find any, either we don't have any more awards or they're, they're just missing. So, this is what they used to look like. Right. That's what. Mine looks like that. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Do we still want them to look like this? I was thinking I could just draw something up in um, in a publisher sort of uh -huh. template, and then we could reproduce it every year on really nice paper, which we have lots of. But is there anything we should change? Since well, since there's one thing. I mean, doing what, what always bothered me is that there was never a date on the, the year. I, I think I does not have me adding a date yeah. or something. And, well, that would be easy to put on your template. So you yeah, but it's it's easy, you know, I could even say the preservation award and then have a 2012 or something, you know, whatever it is, and then that could get changed every year. And um, I'm sure if I look at it, I it might decide, you know, excluded for what's annoying about it, what, what made it difficult. Or something. So it's, it's, even a board of merit seemed like strange for it. Oh, yeah. You could, you could, just say <laughs> you could just say preservation award, yeah. Have to say well, all the old ones wouldn't have to be saved as ephemera. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Given for a live work and they were yeah. I guess I must have signed this one. I mean, to this person never picked it up, is that no. the idea? No. I found it in the drawer. I feel like you know, we go to less trouble than these people. No, we can't. Um, I didn't find a pile of them, I only found two. Yeah. So, and I mean, I could go over this with because, for instance, you know, if you're going to do calligraphy, in this line it would be nice. You know, I can't use that as a line yeah. because it's too low. So we either don't need a line there, or it just needs to be up a little higher. It just it is kind of an odd place. Yeah. And so it could be similar to this, and I would think. But just having a place for the date, and um, yeah, I like having the city hall there. So and probably the address. As well. Sorry. A place to put the address. It seemed like we sort of had to. Well, that's what I'm saying. This is where the address yeah. has been going. Okay. But again, it looks funny because I mean I can't use that. So yeah, you could just have a line that I actually, that would be wonderful because then the calligrapher doesn't have to create this. Usually I put something behind it that has the line and I have to do it on a light box. And oh, so, you add a line. So that would be fine to add a line. Yeah, 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 I can always do that, but whatever. Okay, any more discussion on the awards? Yeah. Barbara, to ask of us anything you'd like. Okay, uh, yeah, if I think By email, then else. we will yep. all commit to. Yeah. Uh, and I'll get to the other server and we'll pin down the date so we can really here. let people know. Right. And we will not leave you out to hang. Okay. If you need for it, need to ask for it. Okay. Um, the next item is, is an important issue and, and we should probably spend some time uh, discussing it. Uh, and that's um, demolition delay ordinance, partial demolitions. Um, the city joined quite a list of other cities across the Commonwealth when we uh, instituted a demolition delay. Um, we are uh, far from unusual in, in having a demolition delay. However, um, it certainly has come to the attention of some of our members and the concern um, that demolition
notice of delay is only triggered upon the request and petition of an applicant for complete demolition. And if the applicant proposes to retain even 160th of the original building, not for too hyperbolic, but basically that's accurate, then a de complete demolition is not being sought and the building inspector, regardless of his desires to be of service historically, is unable to issue a demolition delay. So it, we can certainly imagine the abuse of that kind of uh, uh, petition in that fashion. However, um, this is a, uh, an issue um, that has, has a major problems if we think of ourselves going the other direction too far because clearly it is not our intent nor our mandate or charter to try to unilaterally uh, pass judgment on any remodeling that goes on in, in the city uh, that involves a, a preserved structure. Um, the city is not, for the most part, in, the, in a historic district um, and we are, um, as a result, not at, in a position to pass judgment on uh, small remodeling uh, jobs that are, that are sometimes done on historically preserved or preferably preserved structures. But uh, I, would, I think we should have a discussion about uh, our desire to investigate, and you remember carefully, uh, what other communities have done, uh, what, what models there may be, for serviceable, workable manifestations of um, partial demolition um, delays. It is a subject that requires thoughtful, thoughtful and careful response so as not to overreach. And I can't emphasize that enough. The, the, the best way to kill any good, well-intended intention to uh, uh, preserve the partial demolition of important sections of a building is, is to overreach because the city's uh, residents would react negatively to that. On the other hand, it is our responsibility with the historical commission of the city to perhaps look into doing something or, or at least researching something that would help us preserve um, sections of buildings when uh, for example, uh, a, build, a building that is uh, half preferably preserved, perhaps where most of the building was built in the early 1800s, but where in 1910 a wing was added. If someone come, proposes to come in and tear down the 1810 structure and leaving the, the small 1920 wing, uh, that's not a demolition. That's in, in, in the language of, of the current um, uh, regulations, and yet all of us would, would certainly heave a sigh of uh, remorse with, that we allowed such a thing to, to occur. Um, so these are just the things that we need to, to think about. It's far too early to be talking about what exact form such a proposal would take. Indeed, if, if we are to have such a, or propose such a piece of regulation to the to the council, but perhaps it is not too early to think about how we would go about it if we were to have an interest in this. What should we do, and how can we proceed from here? Well, I, I think that um, yeah, this is something that I've seen in other communities around the country, uh, where as part of their demolition delay, uh, they talk about uh, removal or demolition of character defining architectural features, like tearing down the porch, changing the roof line, you know, doing something like that. I think you could probably find language, and so you might want to check again with the, the National Trust. They have a whole legal department uh, that can say, here are the 57 ordinances around the country that deal with that, and you can cherry pick some of the language uh, from that. Uh, but I, I've seen that done because a lot of it results from the notion of partial demolition. 
there's also demolition by neglect. Mm -hmm. You know, you just let the thing deteriorate. But at a certain point, you know, you demolish the building. So th this has to work very much in conjunction with what I call the, um, you know, the first responders in the city, meaning the building inspection mm -hmm. department. Somebody comes in for a permit to tear down the porch, and they have enough wit to say, oh, no, that's a character-defining feature. It has to go to the historical commission. Or if, I don't know if the city does this, but a citywide, you know, inspections showing buildings that are deteriorating and all of that, uh, that the property owners can be alerted. Um, again, that's a difficult one to do. And again, I'm not that familiar with Massachusetts law to know what you can get away with. Um, but certainly nationally, that stuff is out there, and the trust probably has books on the whole thing. There are, there, some there are people you can talk with. There are some communities in Massachusetts who do almost a, a town-wide or city-wide um, historic district, and I'm not quite sure how they do it. Um, I spoke to Mass Historic about this yeah. a little bit, and um, they gave me a few examples. Like, like in Arlington, if you want to cover your house with vinyl siding, that's considered a demolition, the way they have it worded, which which I don't think is the direction we want to go here. Yeah. Um, but I, I think Louis, the building inspector's biggest concern is going to be when he's presented with something, either does it meet the criteria or, or doesn't it, and he can either check, yes, this is going upstairs, or, or no, it's not, and you can knock it down, and he doesn't want to have to have a lot. A well, lot that's of why you have to have a lot of specific guidelines so that... Uh, we or whoever else would be doing it, you can look at it and say, aha, here's rule number 12, it doesn't meet, therefore it goes. But I think you need to draft those guidelines and standards as part of the ordinance. Uh, it, it's, it's a very tricky thing, but other Is people it? have done it, so there's got to be so some this language 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 again. What was what would you recommend? I would think the National Trust to their legal department would have that. I know they, they have model historic preservation ordinances. Because when we set ours up, I think we got one from the state sure. with the board of right. we adapted. But and I know that mm -hmm. I mean initially we wanted to have yeah. something about partial demolition, and we just ran into the sticking point. And part of mm -hmm. it was with the building commissioner. Just how do you define it? You know, yeah. is it volume? Is it mass? Is mm -hmm. it this? Is it that? And then finally, it was one of the things that we compromised on to get the ordinance passed. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the start. We said, okay. Will forego that, but I think that you make a really good point that if you make it, you just have to make it more specific and see what other people have done and how it's worked in other communities, and if they and again it might be something to send out to that you know, mass to what is this sort mass hist press list mm -hmm. um, to see if other communities how if it's worked well or if they've just run into really subjective things that have caused problems. Well, I know that the Elm Street Historic District. If someone comes in with a proposal to make a change, um, and it's in keeping with the guidelines and it's not a major change, uh, staff can approve that. Uh, Wayne does that right, right. from time to time. And then he informs the Elm Street Historic Commission that this is a decision that he's made. The last one was somebody wanted to tear out old wood windows, put in new wood windows that look like the old ones. Well, that doesn't have to go through the review board. Staff can do that, and if you set up your guidelines uh, that are straightforward enough, then staff can interpret that, whether it's building inspector working with you um, and just saying, you know, that meets the guidelines or it doesn't. Um, you'll get, you know, property owners screaming about it, but that's true with any historic district thing these days. Um, but th there should be some language out there if you're allowed to do this in Massachusetts. Somebody out there has written it down. No sense reinventing the wheel on that. So first things first, I'm, I think I'm hearing that there's the uniformity of in wanting us to proceed to investigate this. Is that right? Okay. All right. Once we you know, find examples of what we think would be better than what we have now for an ordinance, we have perfect uh, examples of why we're talking about this now. Poster children of, of 
activities that have recently taken place that most people don't know has taken place and would be upset to learn about it because it's counter to logic what is, what is happening here. And, uh, and I think it's time. Do you, do you know or would you suggest um, any other sources of information? I think the National Trust is perfect. They have a good overview, as Bruce said. Of What's their, their formal name? Is it just that? National, National Trust, Trust, Trust for Historic, Historic Preservation. Yeah. 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 And they Are have regional all? offices as well as the National Office. And I think. And they work beyond just uh, historic districts. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. They have a whole. Are we all members? Are we all getting their magazine as a. No, as a yeah, and anybody here who is not a member of the National Trust, I should shame on. I think it's important because you know, just if I could take a minute about the National Trust, David. Let me just take a minute about how this this may not be a perfect answer that you would have. I would ask you to keep it general rather than referring to. Well, yeah. I mean, they started. It won't have anything to do with us here, but they started um, largely after the demolished the demolition of Penn Station. I mean that's when it really became a high profile organization of Jackie Kennedy tried to stop Jackie Kennedy on NASA tried to stop the demolition. And it, it actually they that's when they came onto the radar screen and and were active uh, in iconic structures like train stations. And then they became involved with downtown through the Main Street program. Yearland project. Yes, and that has re resuscitated a lot of downtowns in uh, all over the country through that program. And you see a little inkling of that in New Hampshire, not in Massachusetts too much, but in New Hampshire there's some, some Main Street programs. Key. That's right. Uh, it's an organization that was chartered by Congress in 1949, uh, the same way that the American Red Cross was chartered. Uh, so it is um, a nationally chartered, but it's a, um, you know, a membership organization. But it really is the umbrella of organization for historic preservation in the country. And anybody who is not a subscriber, and it's only 15 bucks a year, um, I would even advocate, if we had money in this group, to buy subscriptions for every city council <laughs> so they get the magazines of <laughs> um, but you know, it's something. You, it, it's sort of the fraternity of the preservation movement nationally. The yeah. last couple of issues have been very important mm -hmm. to us locally about how they've uh, done adaptive reuse of old Absolutely. structures and downtowns that are sort of downtrodden until someone came in and rescued that building with a modern use and and has resuscitated entire neighborhoods. And it's a very very uplifting magazine every time. Good. What is the priority that you all would place on this, this project to, to explore? Well, I, I think it's something that is on the horizon. We, we see the potential for you know, demolition either by neglect or partial demolition out there. And before we have to react and say, oh, well, there's nothing we can do, they're tearing half that building down. It wouldn't hurt to find out what it is that we can do and what other people have done. So it's sort of a preemptory thing to do. I agree. And if, you know, if we could encourage staff to um, you know track some of this stuff down, I think that would be a nice little project for you in your spare time. Yeah, I I think um, what may be helpful is if for the next meeting I put together a memo with different ways to approach it and different ways that other towns have done it. And then we can look at some of the pros and cons of, of each of those. Does that sound like a good has, idea? Has Chris Kelly responded to any of our... He did. He basically said lots of towns do it, some towns do it in really not good ways that are sort of marginally legal, and some towns do it so that they don't really end up looking at very much. And there's a lot of ways to look at it in between. So here's a list of everybody. Some probably that, that refer it to the board for it. every case. Yeah. yeah, he said, he said sometimes have almost a full time job just for doing it, just like. referring these. My personal preference would be there to be more than simply 
referring to the board for its right. opinion because of the degree at which that opens the, each case to be a matter of an enormous and unguided debate. Um, that makes it difficult. For what board are they talking about? The historic uh, board? Conservation board. So did he offer any, any uh, exemplary uh, plans or should we talk to him about that? Not really. The, um, the one example he called out Quick search, um, I saw them in Weston and um, Cambridge, I think, and Newton, Eastern Mass towns. Cambridge, just in a nutshell, he said, it includes in partial demolition, demolition and subject to demo review, removal of a roof, including raising the overall height of a roof, rebuilding the roof to a different pitch, or adding another story to a building. And some of those I'm not even sure if we would want to review. Mm -hmm. uh, removal of one side of a building, Gutting of a building's interior to the point where exterior features are impacted, that seems like it could be Could you possibly, possibly forward that around to? Sure. Yeah, I'll do that right now. Okay. And then removal of more than 25% of a structure. But then again, how do you define 25%? Is it 25% by volume? Right. Is it 25% of the size? So that could be size? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's the old, the old conundrum of well, if you're removing every architectural feature of a, of a stick build a Queen Anne house and, and coating it with with uh, vinyl sliding, um, then you may be doing less than 25%, but you completely ruined uh, the house, whereas taking off uh, a side porch where, of the same building might be more volume, but but much less uh, intrusive. So, um, but, but as, as Bruce pointed out, and I completely agree, we need to make something that is quite understandable uh, at the uh, building inspector level so that we can not put the building inspector on the I see uh, in, in this in this matter. I mean, it's a checklist. The other side of the coin is a, what they call affirmative maintenance. That if your inspectors drive through town and say, "Oh, you have a deteriorated house there, you have to fix it up." Now, some of them cities do that, but that's usually in the more affluent community or with a neighborhood association or something. Right. And there are a couple of shacks around town that I question why are they still Let's there. <laughs> that one has a snowball chance in hell of ever passing. I know. <laughs> that funny little shack that's across from our company um, on 66. Could I, could I ask? I, I will. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, 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 I will not want to join the National Trust. I will <laughs> approach them for information about the, uh, partial demolition delays and see if they have any exemplary language. Um, could I ask? If I can look at you as a cloud rather than just as a, as a committee, um, could you do some research on this too? Could, could you all Google in the spare evening hour um, uh, demo partial delays, um, you, perhaps even looking at other states, um, and see if there's anything of interest? Uh, once again, we need to find a reasonable medium, uh, something that will help us preserve buildings but not at the same time overreach uh, the intended purposes of, of, our, of our role here. Um, anything else to say on that before we move on? Okay. Um, next item is commission projects update in uh, A, Form B inventory. Uh, so we have received all of the Form Bs from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, and I hope to have a wonderful map to be able to show everybody where all the potential National Register districts are, but the way PDPC has their database set up requires a lot of finessing to be able to put into it, be able to be put into a GIS compatible format. How many properties are there, sir? Um, there's about a thousand. Did she give it to you as a spreadsheet? She did, but it's not as straightforward as you would think because there some foreign bees have more than than one building on them, so it, it, we're still trying. But we do have all of them. Do you know how many of those are new? Um, I think there's about 100, which is what she yeah, said. I was saying saying 100 or maybe 150 or yeah. uh, about that. Yeah, but we do have all the historic data, which is great. We're just uh, working the map to make it will be particularly interesting. What do you think the timeline is for the completion of the integration of the GIS system? Um, 
Well, it depends on, I guess, what, what we're looking for. If we're just looking for maps of potential national register districts, I think we'll have that done by the next meeting. But if we're looking to have some sort of clickable map where people can see um, whether or not a property has a Form B, and if it has a Form B, can they see it? I think that might take some time. That's a, that's a pretty uh, labor intensive thing to do. Okay. You have a, I mean, uh, reflect on probably on an anecdote. I, I um, came in and, and chatted in a, a National Register meeting um, that uh, Sarah uh, staffed with the folks from the Palmer Terrace na neighborhood. And it was clear that the form, the form Bs had played a role that was really quite extraordinary and, and heartening uh, because they saw their neighborhood now as reported. In fact, the few people who didn't have a form B on their house wanted to know why none had been done. They wanted to be in, and I had to explain that it, you know, it was nothing personal. <laughs> um, uh, in, in some cases, I think it was sort of a hidden house that was sort of in a pork chop lot, and nobody knew there was one back there, that kind of thing. Um, but it was clear that the result of our putting together of this, of this uh, concept of having a lot more form Bs done, um, and then putting it before the CPA, getting it funded, getting the project going. The, fun, the, the, the result of all that was that there are now people who are really proud of their neighborhood. They're looking forward to being part of the National Register. And who knows where that will go. It might someday go to a historic district. It might not. But even if it doesn't, even if the homes are preserved simply by dint of personal pride, um, it is a group of people who now see themselves as living in a section of Northampton other than just Pomeroy uh, Terrace. It's, it's a Pomeroy Terrace, the really historic registered neighborhood. Yeah. And that would not have happened without the Form Bs. It has that interesting interesting imprimatur effect that, so, that means something to people. What's the goal of this? What's going to happen? Is there going to be a, a little street sign that will note this on either end Good of the question. street? Um, do, you, do you know where they want to go with it? Sure. They definitely want to pursue national register status. I, I had a few questions about signage, so I think people would like to have some sort of recognition that this is yeah. a special historic area. But they could often city. put a, um, the, the city or the neighborhood would have to buy the markers, but it would say uh, Pomeroy Terrace neighborhood listed on the national register of historic places. Elm Street has yes, it could be the historic to the, Elm yeah. Street yeah. sign. And of course, downtown is a um, national register district, but there are no signs or markers on any buildings. There's some on individual buildings, but not in our But um, there's no comprehensive signing for that. But yeah, you can do pretty much whatever you want. The biggest thing is, and I think you really pointed this out at the meetings of your writings, the, the difference between being listed on the National Register of Historic Places and being located within a local historic district. One has design review for property owners. The other is a planning tool um, in case of federal or state funding coming through an area. Mm -hmm. um, but one gives you the national prestige, the other gives you the local. Um, but with these neighborhoods, you reach a certain tipping point where, oh, it's good to be historic. And you'll see it in the real estate ads. Right. Historic yes. district. 10000 bucks more. We had a party at one of our neighbors, and I was pointing out that the city had commissioned this mm -hmm. inventory. And what it would lead to possibly would be new historic districts, and not you know, the most stringent one like Elm Street, but sort of lesser flavors of historic districts. And so there's some interest on my street. So oh, anyway, well done. Um, the CPA also feels uh, that the money was well spent, and uh, they're, they're pleased to see that, that follow through. And another question about the paper form fees. Now that everything is electronic and we're working again, he's online, does the historic commission see any reason to maintain the paper copies in the planning department files, or do you think it would be better served to donate Should them to the paper one? Um, Currently, all the, the paper form fees that Mass Historic used to require are in binders in the planning department. But we were thinking that once the old forms and the new forms are integrated, it may be worthwhile just to donate them to Forbes so that people could go look through them there. Mm -hmm. Or 
you have room. I love them. I mean, I, yeah. think, I, mean, I sure. think they should be preserved somewhere. Yeah, I mean, yeah. now it, yeah. it seems sort of useless to have them there. I don't think anybody knows they're there. No, no one knows yeah. how to access them. But as long as they're preserved, I don't, I don't yeah. think it, landing force would be an appropriate place for that. Yeah. Okay, great. Now, as, you're gonna, you know, as long as we can say that forms, you know, if you decide you don't have room or whatever, then you, you have to give them back. You have to give them back, or you at least have to notify the city so that they they can make sure not send them to a concrete building out behind the waste, water waste treatment. No, I mean the, the solid landfill. Where, no, don't uh, set, put them on the next shredder. That I read about. Right. <laughs> the next shredder. Put them truck. on a Kindle and then pop up. Um, and sir, so you under seven B, you've written uh, local preservation restrictions, um, which of course all of us are keenly in favor of, but <laughs> um, but the reality. Um, uh, is it, is it, what, did, what did we want to say about Oh, this that? was the, the CPA project that got funded oh, 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 two right. rounds ago. Um, Self-identification or self-regulation. Yeah, we had <coughs> ten homeowners who were interested. Some seemed very interested. Some seemed just that they maybe wanted a little bit more information about preservation restrictions. But we, we haven't heard definitively that anybody really wants to go forward, but we're still working on that. I'm going to send out a press release shortly just to keep it on people's radar and maybe see if anybody else has any ideas, specific people to contact or, or ways to get it out there. I, I think about six months ago, people had said to let architects know, and we did. And did but I'm, I'm, about that. I'm not sure what you're talking. Maybe I missed that meeting. Um, this was a local historic preservation restriction program. The CPA gave us, I think it was $10,000 for a pilot program oh, to get people good. to donate preservation restrictions. It's, 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 it's an easement to actually yeah. preserve their farm as farmland or someone who is a real history, home history buff and they've just done their house to a T and they don't want somebody coming in later on and undoing it all. Um, and so they want to put a, uh, a restriction onto the house uh, for preservation. And um, it would obviously bring into question, bring into thought at least um, issues of preservation of value if uh, restricting its uh, future use, and that may be why um, uh, there, no one has followed through with it. But it's certainly not out of the question that somebody would do that, because people do that with their farmland. So I don't, uh, we, and that has an effect on value. Um, so um, uh, it, it may be something that comes up. Yeah. Again, the National Trust studied this 20, 30 years ago, and basically what you're doing is you're creating an easement that says, you know, I own this property, I don't want it to be destroyed. I want it to be preserved in perpetuity. Therefore, I will sign an agreement with you, the city of Northampton, uh, that says that uh, I will never change this and in perpetuity this will ride with the deed. Therefore, it will stay here forever. And you guys are the watchdogs to make sure that this doesn't happen. What they do is they appraise the property at its highest and best use. They appraise the property at its restricted use. And that differential is a tax donation. Uh, and so if, if it's substantial, that can mean a lot of money to some people. So that's available. Um, and again, I don't know if anybody in Massachusetts has ever used it, but you can see you know, what the potential would be. In some instances, it has not proven to be a difference in value. In fact, it has added to the value. Therefore, you've got a negative but if you have a beautiful building mm -hmm. um, that was well preserved yeah. and but near or within a, a, a business zone, sure, um, then its best and highest use might be seen as uh, some sort of professional office. Right. Uh, but your actual valuation might be lower because it's in a business zone. Um, and you could conceivably um, uh, affect some savings in that tax haven. Yeah. 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 Take the train station, for example. You know, as a train station, it's the way it is. It's valued at that. Um, if you could build a 20-story hotel on that site by zoning, perhaps the value of that property, just as a piece of dirt to build something on, might be much higher than the property with the building on but you're interested in preserving it forever and ever. Mm -hmm. So you give away this much value 
and you retain that much. Yeah. So what you've given away, that's a charitable contribution. On the other side, anyone who, uh, anyone who has refinanced in order to affect savings with long with mortgages and so forth, uh, that, that, that uh, you know, you have to be quite persuasive to your banker in order to um, talk about uh, their lawyers and special property. So that, that may be coming to effect here as well. The ideal candidate would own their home outright, for sure. That would make things a lot easier. Yeah, almost, almost of necessity. Like Chicago yeah. used this very effectively in a lot yeah. of their neighborhoods. But still, this is, this is the kind of community that might generate this kind of uh, uh, offer. And so I'm glad it's, I'm glad it's available. And then also, if the uh, if Pomeroy Terrace becomes a National Register Historic District, and you have property in there that's a contributing property. Suppose you want to restore it as a and b That's a commercial restoration. Uh, you can get investment tax credits for whatever cost you put into that. And I don't know what it is. It used to be 25% of what you spent. You get a tax credit. That goes off your tax bill. But it has to be a property that contributes to a national register district. And you know, half the buildings downtown contribute. You have to go through the, the hoops of the appropriate rehabilitation. The state has to approve it. But uh, you know, that can be very lucrative. You know, cities like St. Louis and uh, other places have done that. Uh, Louisville, in their downtown areas, multi million dollar project. They syndicate the tax credits. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's the whole real estate world out there, as you're probably well aware. Mm -hmm. Okay. And join the trust. That's <laughs> don't know where to go with it. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds wonderful. Um, we've talked about Pomeroy Terrace National Register update as a, we sort of segue into that from the four medium inventory. Um, is there anything else to say about that, Sarah? Uh, no, I think that was it. Yeah, that, that proceeding along. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're pursuing it. Good. And Round Hill area update. Yeah, I can talk about that. I just came from the um, Elm Street Historic District uh, meeting, and the folks from Round Hill have prepared a preliminary study report on what they call the Round Hill Road extension to the Elm Street Historic District. And basically, and I only have one copy of this, um, they're talking about, um, and I can pass this around, simply adding the section of Round Hill Road from Elm Street up that far. I can't name the landmarks. But it includes almost all of the Clark School properties. And this is what precipitated their interest in pursuing this. Uh, so they have done a lot of research they've used the old form Bs, the new form Bs, they're working with the state uh, to um, uh, do this, and the Elm Street Historical Commission has said that now we as the commission will take a look at this report and make our recommendations as to the appropriateness of bringing that in to the Elm Street Historical District. Um, it will have to go through all of the public hearings and through this committee and through all of that. So we're not looking at anything happening until you know February, March or something like that, particularly with elections coming up. Um, but this is the research that they've done. And in effect, the neighborhood has said, this is what we want. Let's get the ball rolling. But essentially, it would just be an extension of the Elm Street Historic District would be administered by the same committee using the same guidelines that Elm Street has published. Mm -hmm. And this would be incorporated into any ordinance that would say, you know, the boundaries have changed to accept this and that. And in addition, the guidelines such and such public so and so will be applicable to this district also. Uh, but that would be a, a genuine local Northampton historic district, simply expanding in that direction. Now, I can't help but notice that the um, the proposed district boundaries include 
exclusively Clark's Pool That's right. properties, and and none of the properties owned by the petitioners. Oh, I, I don't know about that. all of them. Are, all the buildings there are numbered Clark properties. Oh, I think all the buildings are numbered according to what the their inventory of historic houses. Oh, so those are their numbers. Yeah, those are the, the committee's numbers. Oh, I see. I thought that a that lot was. of the properties are Clark School. A lot of them are private residences. What is what is the um, I mean, this is their effort rather than our effort by way right. of information. Um, what what guidelines are there about um, what might be called reluctant participants in a historic district? Well, it's going to have to go through public hearings. It's going to have to go through this commission. It's going to have to go through the planning board. It's going to have to go through city council. So there will be plenty of opportunities for folks on both sides to have their say. Ultimately, is it the city council call? Yeah, it, it's a, yeah, an amendment to the zoning board. Yeah, yeah. And if um, you've got 4,000 people screaming against it out here, it ain't going to pass. Okay. Um, by my question, I wasn't intending to yeah. imply that anyone mm -hmm. particularly would be reluctant, but just a, a question. Well, the, the folks who own Clark School are very hesitant about this. Are they? Okay. They're not sure what the impact will be since they're trying to sell some of those properties. And in this kind of market climate, a historic district would be looked upon by them as an encumbrance. I see. And so you know, it has to be a balance. But they're, they're proceeding, so that is in the pipeline. Um, but it's only that Round Hill, is it what, Round Hill Street? Round Hill Road. Round Hill Road. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do anything with all the rest of the wonderful historic houses around there that to me have just as much potential for a historic district, which our inventory will show when you see those dots all over that area. So no but Henshaw, no Crescent. No. This is all that's on the table. So you just take what's on the table. Can, uh, did they set up a, a formal group yet with a website or anything? I don't know about a website, but they seem to be fairly sophisticated in their organization. Uh, I don't know the names of the people that are involved with it unless they're on that sheet. Uh, you can probably check with Wayne, I think. He's acting as staff to this group, uh, to the Elm Street Historic Commission. And so he would know the cast of characters. But they've met with the state folks. They've gone through all the procedures that are required for establishing a local historic district, and they've, they've sort of done their homework. So is this, is, this, um, is, is, is this the group that used to be known as the Elm Street Historic District, plus some people who we might call sort of Round Hill neighborhood? Well, so there's the existing that came to us and asked. They, they can well be, yeah. Right, yeah, that's the same group. They can be So it's sort of an enhanced Elm Street. Right. Yeah, they went ahead and they said, okay, now we know what to do. And okay. proceed. So it's in the pipeline. Any questions for Bruce on this? And actually, the, the Elm Street Historic District Commission is really the Northampton Historic District Commission. Right. But there's only one historic district. Right. So they only focus on Elm Street. But, for example, at Pomeroy Terrace, or something else came in, this would be the commission that could deal with an additional district. Mm -hmm. it's, it's set up that way, technically. Okay. Questions? Okay. Next issue is membership. Uh, I did put a call out to the mayor's office to get the word out to people that the historic commission is looking for members. So there's a small notice on the city homepage. Now, I think there may have been something that was that a few days ago. But as far as I know, I haven't heard anything from anybody applying. So if anybody knows of anybody who's interested, have put something in the gazette. I th I think there may have been, but it was or it was really small, or they sent it and it hasn't been in yet. Maybe we could. Add something to the press release for the preservation awards. Just saying, you know, the, I'm to you know, I mean, I could possible. just think of some way maybe yeah. to add that into that. For the awards, right. the award process itself might actually introduce us to people who, right, right. who, who uh, might be interested. 
Right. And that's the avenue I came into this committee. Uh, yeah. um, we certainly are interested in other names of someone that you know uh, that you'd like to uh, suggest to that they uh, make their, their name known to the mayor uh, or uh, to the planning office. That would be wonderful. Okay. Um, review of mail. Anything that is, uh, if, if people have suggestions for the agenda. 